Today I want to talk to you about how I was able to feel much more at ease talking to people. Because now, you know, you see me posting videos of me flirting with women, talking to all sorts of people. But the thing is, I wasn't always like this. And two, uh, I can pinpoint to one turning point that changed everything for me. When I was younger, uh, I wasn't particularly confident. Uh, I would even say that I was more on the reserved, shy side. But I think that as a man, uh, the first pain point, uh, the first reason I started to think about all of this is because, you know, I wanted to be able to talk to girls. And even though I had a girlfriend in high school and, you know, I would sometimes get lucky, uh, I never really felt socially free. Uh, I was always stuck in my head, overthinking everything. But one day in my early 20s, uh, I started thinking about how do most men go about meeting women? This was before any gaps and for the most part, every weekend, we dress up, we go out, we spend money, we drink in the hope of feeling a little bit of courage. Uh, and for what exactly? I mean, nine times out of 10, you go home, you jack off and you fall asleep. And the worst part is you do it weekend after weekend. At the same time, I also noticed that every day, without going out of my way, just by going to school, by going to work, by running my errands, walking around, uh, I see at least four, five, six beautiful women every day. Uh, sometimes they're literally at arm's reach. And the best part is no one's trying to talk to them then. Now, I would love to tell you that that was it, that this was my turn of event, that from then on, I was able to meet women left and right, but uh, that couldn't be further from the truth. I did absolutely nothing. Uh, I would even sometimes watch those YouTube videos of guys, you know, picking up girls in the street uh, and be pumped about it. But then every time I would see a girl, I couldn't do anything. I would fix my hair, worry that my nose was too big, that I was too hairy, uh, that she was too beautiful for me. You know, what would I say anyway? I would think of a hundred different scenarios where everything would go wrong and at the end do absolutely nothing. Weeks went by, months went by, actually years went by. And one day I woke up, I was 25 years old, I had just ended a long-term relationship. And you know, I knew deep down, I knew within myself that I had this sort of unlived chapter of my life I wanted to write. And so I sort of looked at myself and thought, you know, I'm 25, I'm not gonna get any younger, so this is the time to do it. So I grabbed my balls and uh, went for it. And the beginning wasn't very glorious. Uh, you know, sometimes I would walk around for like hours and not talk to anyone. Uh, the worst was sometimes I would see a girl and, you know, start walking towards her and literally three feet, a meter away from her, I would freak out and uh, change direction. Uh, I felt pretty useless, but uh, for some reason I kept trying. It was very frustrating, uh, but I think that one of the things that kept me going was that ultimately I knew that it was all within my control. Uh, when you see someone you want to talk to and you can't, I mean, it's never because there's a trap in front of you that you know you might fall into and die. It's always because of how you perceive the situation and all of the stories you tell yourself in your head. And so deep down, I knew that this was me against myself and that it was within my control. After some time, I eventually did it. Uh, I don't remember quite vividly, but I remember being overly anxious. I actually remember stuttering a few times and obviously getting rejected. But the best part was that it felt amazing. Even though I was rejected, the simple fact that I wanted to do something and I did it, that you know I took action, uh, made me feel like the biggest bowler. And you would think that that realization enabled me to then start talking to whoever I wanted, but the weirdest part was that actually not at all. Uh, when I saw the next cute girl around, uh, it felt like I was back to square one, uh, completely frozen and unable to say anything. And that really troubled me because, you know, if I tell you that you cannot hurt yourself, then, you know, maybe you're going to try to do all sorts of stunts, uh, jump from building to building or whatever. But uh, here I was, uh, I was in a situation where I knew that taking action and going for it would make me feel amazing, yet when I was presented with another opportunity, uh, I was still frozen. But eventually, after a few weeks, I started noticing a pattern. I noticed that, you know, I have days where I sort of randomly talk to more people than usual. Uh, maybe I joke with someone in line, maybe I talk to the barista, and for some reason, I realized that the days where I had more interactions, uh, I was just much more likely to feel the courage to walk up to a girl and talk to her as if the previous interactions were sort of a warm-up to that moment. And so from that moment on, I started to look for every opportunity I had 
to talk to anyone so that I could basically warm myself up. And as I started to become hyper aware of all of the opportunities uh, around me, uh, I started uh, noticing something surprising. I basically realized that I would censor myself quite a lot. Uh, and by this, I mean that, you know, we all have little moments in our daily life where, you know, there is someone next to you. Uh, maybe it's an old man, maybe it's a cute girl, maybe it's a dude. And for some reason, you want to say something. You want to make a joke, you want to make a compliment. Maybe you just want to say hello and like start an interaction. Um, and for some reason, you don't, right? Like you, you think about it, you look at the person and then you're like, yeah, whatever. And you just keep to yourself. And at first, you know, if you take each of those little situations independently, you know, they're worthless. I mean, who cares if you didn't make a joke to an old man in the bus or if you didn't give that compliment to that old lady with a hat. But uh, I started realizing that those moments happen to me very often. And I sort of started wondering, like, you know, what would be their compound effect over the scale of my life? I started realizing that I was effectively censoring myself day in and day out. And I started wondering about what impacts could it have on me. Uh, and the first one I noticed is that, you know, you basically create this habit of censoring yourself. I mean, you want to say something, you want to like throw a ball, but instead you keep it in uh, and you keep it in so often that in the end it feels out of the ordinary to just say what you want to say. And the second effect really happens over time because, you know, every time you want to say something but you don't, uh, you prevent yourself from experiencing something new, from meeting someone, from experiencing maybe an awkward moment. And the thing is, as those experiences add up, you know, they can change the trajectory of your life. I mean, who would you be today if you had expressed yourself even half of the times in the last 10 years? I mean, the way you feel about expressing yourself, the way you relate to people, all of this would be different. And at that moment, it hit me. Remember when I said, uh, when I saw the next cute girl around, uh, it felt like I was back to square one. Uh, completely frozen and unable to say anything. Well, I understood why. Self-expression is like a pipe. So if you want to express something and you say it, that thing, you know, leaves your pipe and your pipe stays clear. But when you want to say something and you don't, that unexpressed emotion stays within your pipe. And since you censor yourself all the time, uh, it ends up clogging you. And this was the reason it was so hard for me to talk to the second girl uh, it was because even though I had said something the first time and, you know, a little drop went through, uh, I was still very much clogged. This realization was a huge turning point for me. Uh, I basically went from being externally motivated by, you know, meeting women, getting her number, uh, feeling validated to something much more internal, much more intrinsic. Um, am I able to express myself? Uh, am I able to be true to myself? And I started asking myself a simple question every time. Did I express myself or did I censor myself? That single question allowed me to grow much more in tune with myself and feel grounded. Uh, I think it's easy to forget that interacting with other people is first and foremost about expressing yourself. And your ability to express yourself and to be true to yourself is really the foundation of all of your relationships. By shifting the focus on myself, I very quickly started interacting with much more people than I could ever imagine and I very quickly became much more comfortable and at ease. That experience made me realize that my desire to engage with people should not be driven by the outcome. Uh, it's not like, oh, maybe I'll make a friend, so let's talk to this person. Or, oh, this person is probably not gonna want to talk to me, so I'm not gonna say anything. Uh, the reason you should express yourself is to be at peace with yourself, to be able to live true to yourself and have your actions and intentions aligned. The rest, making friends, finding a girlfriend, getting her number, uh, experiencing an awkward moment, those are just side effects. Now, you might be very clumsy at first, but you know, it's like if you say someone who's gonna try to learn how to throw a ball, you know, you might not be able to throw the ball on the target the first time, but as you focus on yourself and you iterate, you'll be able to calibrate yourself until you don't really have to think about it anymore. I mean, you know, when you talk to your friends, you don't think about it, so why should you think about it when you talk to new people? I would say that as long as you don't have any bad intentions, if you want to say something, always go for it. Um, cultivating your self-expression 
is the process that is going to make you learn and grow because it will make you experience new situations that you will learn from. It's basically the engine of your growth. And if it's hard at first, um, just start small. You know, just say hello, ask a question, uh, just practice basically throwing that ball uh, and cultivate your self-expression until you basically create this outward flow of expression. You know, when I was a kid, uh, sometimes my parents would bring me to the beach and at low tide with all the other kids, we would very often build those dam, right? So we'd build a dam and the water would like flow down. And at some point, once the dam was full of water, uh, we had two ways of breaking it. Either we would basically just like step all over it and, and smash it, or we could poke a very little hole uh, and, you know, a stream would start coming out. And the more water will come out, the more it will push the sand and eventually the whole wall will break up. It's kind of the same thing with your self-expression. So, you know, just focus on whatever you can express and one thing after the other, you're going to create this outward flow of expression and you'll end up smashing that internal dam. Um, so that's it for today. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, you know, do you feel clogged? Uh, have you been able to overcome those limitations? Uh, which kind of excuses are you telling yourself? Also, I would love to meet everyone who's watching my videos. So shoot me an email at ruben at socialanimal.us uh, and we'll arrange a FaceTime. That's it and uh, see you next time.